a new study just published in the scientific journal, which was a follow-up to a study done in 2022 on aspartame, more commonly known as NutraSweet. Uh, this study suggests not only does aspartame pose some serious health risks to those that consume it, but it may actually have a pretty negative impact on their offspring. Yeah, that's right. Not just the people that eat it, but on their children. And in some cases, their children's children. Uh, my name's Chuck. I'm a certified nutritionist and health coach. I've lost 120 pounds doing whole food, keto, and carnivore. So uh, there's going to be links to these studies in the show notes below and some other links as well. Uh, before we dive into this study, uh, one of the things that I found while I was doing some research for this video was a study I actually found incredibly fascinating. So this was a meta-analysis of previous studies on aspartame and other artificial sweeteners. And it looked at the effectiveness of these sweeteners at actually weight loss and weight management. I mean, I, I, after all, the only reason why anybody wants to pour this stuff down their throat is to reap the benefit of, of weight loss. I mean, that's the whole goal, right? It's in all kinds of diet sodas. It's in all kinds of diet products, low, low calorie, zero calorie, all of those kind of things. Well, this 2017 uh, review of, of studies found that there was no evidence to support the fact that aspartame was in any way beneficial in weight loss or weight management. And in fact, it found that there was actually pretty good evidence to show that the regular consumption of aspartame actually increased weight and your waist circumference. So the only possible reason you'd ever want to consume this, not only does it not work, it causes the opposite result. Uh, and this is for a number of reasons, but one of which is that regular consumption of aspartame actually increases appetite. So right on its face, the only reason you'd ever want to do this, not only does it not work, you get the opposite results. Now, if we just start there, there's no reason to consume this. But Let's say you just happen to like the flavor of NutraSweet, I guess. I don't know. You just love Diet Coke or Coke Zero or whatever. Okay. But there's lots of risks associated with the consumption. So outside of weight gain, for example, increased risks of certain diseases. Now, this is actually from an article, again, which will be linked in the show notes below. Uh, some research suggests that aspartame increases the risk of certain types of cancer including lymphoma and leukemia. Also, urinary tract tumors, neurological tumors, type 2 diabetes, uh, preterm delivery, toxicity in the kidneys, toxic liver disease, and harmful changes to the salivary glands. And we haven't got to the new study yet. These are just the, the, the potential risks and looks like suggested associations with the people that actually consume it. Uh, also, the World Health Organization, which, you know, consider the source, but still, uh, they point out potential associations between the consumption of aspartame and other artificial sweeteners as well, uh, with increased risks of metabolic disease, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. There are other risks as well, uh, one of which is methanol production. Now, methanol production does happen from the consumption of other foods, uh, tomato juice, for example, certain vegetables, those types of things, fermented beverages. But one of the things that happens in the breakdown of aspartame is not only free methanol, but also formaldehyde, which is a known carcinogenic. The only time you really want a lot of, you know, uh, formaldehyde in your body is when they're embalming you. It, it, doesn't really matter at that point. Now, all of these things are, you know, said to be, yeah, you know, as long as you're consuming it in smaller amounts, it doesn't really matter. But my thought on that is, if I need to worry about the consumption rate of, of something that's not real and doesn't work as intended, then why do I really want to consume it at all? So uh, this latest study was conducted by the uh, Florida State University College of Medicine. 
And, and as I mentioned, it was a follow-up study that had been done in 2022. Now, these studies were conducted on mice, which are not human, obviously, uh, but and they were conducted basically in, in the same fashion with the same doses of aspartame. And, and I'm just going to read a, a few quotes here. Now, the study in 2022 looked at anxiety. The study that was just recently uh, released looked specifically at spatial learning and memory. So here's what it says. The offspring of male mice uh, consumed aspartame at levels equivalent to much lower doses than those deemed safe by the FDA. So they were given much smaller amounts than uh, the FDA deemed uh, appropriate. In fact, 8% and 15% of what the FDA says is perfectly safe for human consumption. They demonstrated spatial learning and memory deficits throughout the controlled study. The cognitive function that is distinct from the anxiety behavior, which was demonstrated in the previous study, so the effects of aspartame are much more widespread than the previous paper had suggested. Um, the paper goes on to say that over the course of 16 weeks, the mouse models were separated into three groups, a control group that consumed only water, uh, a a group that congested 7% of the FDA's recommended maximum intake. That was the equivalent to one 16-ounce diet soda. That's it. The second group consumed twice that amount, or the equivalent of two 16-ounce 16 two 16 diet sodas. All of the mouse models were tested at 4, 8, and 12-week intervals uh, in several different mazes and those types of things. The mice in the aspartame free control group found the safe box quickly, and those that ingested aspartame took much longer to learn the task. They have to use a different strategy. They do find the escape box eventually. They are able to compensate in some way. The compensation to overcome learning and memory deficits is significant, however. Again, they can function, but they need longer time and extra help in order to do it. Uh, a really interesting thing about this study and, and others that have done been done before is the way this actually happens. Aspartame, along with many other things, don't cause permanent changes to your DNA, but it does cause what's called epigenetic changes. Uh, they're not permanent, but because of the interaction with uh, these certain chemicals, it changes the way that your body actually reads and replicates DNA. So it actually affected the sperm of the male mice. It looks like this actually also affects women when they're carrying children, depending on what they consume, whether or not they're pre-diabetic, whether they have extremely high glucose or insulin levels. We just don't appreciate the amount of impact, not only on our own bodies, but the bodies of our children based on what we consume. And I'll have a link to, uh, you know, a short article about epigenetics if you want to go check that out as well. And finally, on to the response from those that sell, approve, and promote these products. Industry experts, including Calorie Control Council, defended aspartame in light of the FSU study. Uh, not only should the results of this study not be extended to humans, nor the general population, but there is also no link between low and no, calor no calorie sweeteners and cognitive impairments, uh, such as memory loss or learning deficiencies in humans. I, there's absolutely nothing to see here. It's perfectly safe. Consume as much as you like. I mean, and after all, you can trust us. We're the ones selling it. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.